After quitting my position at Mall Security, I had been looking for some sort of job involving a similar responsibility. Something had always fascinated me about it. The power, mainly. And no, don't worry, I'm not some sort of secret totalitarian who wants to rule over people's lives. Rather, I just simply enjoy the feeling of being able to patrol around in uniform. It was oddly fun for me. Not quite sure why. It had been a long and grueling couple of weeks of unemployment, until I was offered a night shift job at a storage unit building that was a few miles off in the outskirts of the city. The manager of the property seemed just as thrilled to give me the job as I was to take it. It was especially cold during these times here in Minnesota. Christmas was not too far off, which I was extremely excited about. I was going to go visit my family down in Chicago during all that. Trading presents, eating good food, and indulging in social interaction. I'm still only 27 years old at the time of writing this, so my excitement of being able to drink was still quite strong. I wasn't an alcoholic by any means, but coming home after a long day of work and cracking open a cold beer never hurt anyone. When the night had finally arrived for me to start my first shift, I was relaxed in my admittedly messy apartment and watching whatever had piqued my interest on Netflix until it was nearly 7 in the evening. I lived alone so I hadn't ever really worried about bothering others with my lazy appearance whenever I had nothing to do for the day. It wasn't that I was a deadbeat or anything, I just never felt the need to overachieve or to do more than what was expected of me. But yet whenever I did I'd do any hard work, I always felt proud of myself. But tonight was different. I had already collected my security uniform from the owner of the building a few days previously, so I was all dressed up and ready to go. But for some reason, I collected the uniform of the guy's house instead of the building, which I found to be a little strange but try not to dig too deep into it. This night would be my first night seeing the actual building itself. I already had the address of the place written down. I hopped in the car and began my drive over to the storage unit building. I had lived in the city pretty much all my life so I was always used to the hectic and often chaotic nature of the roads. Even at nighttime, these streets were often crowded, way more so than they should have been. My shift had actually started at 9, but the traffic on my way had held me back for nearly an hour and my euphoria of excitement was beginning to dwindle into bitter frustration at all the people who had either cut me off or drove so slow to the point to where and getting out and running seemed like a more valid option. I did my best to keep my head up though. There was no need to delve into such a mindless anger over something that wasn't even so bad in the grand scheme of things. The destination was worth the trip. After it seemed like an eternity, I had finally arrived at the area of the storage unit building. It was even more isolated than what I had originally thought. It was a large, square-shaped cement structure with two big iron doors on the front. In between the doors was a large chain lock keeping them together, which I had the key for. Behind the building was the beginning of a very eerie-looking forest. Nothing but trees and bushes for miles is what it seemed like. I was definitely alone out here so the chances of having to deal with burglary seemed pretty low. I smiled, thinking about how this job was going to be even easier than I thought. It even paid well above minimum wage. I didn't see how I could have landed a sweeter deal than what was in front of me. I parked my car off to the side where the iron door to the left ended and it was just pure cement. I reached into the back seat of the car and grabbed my nightstick, my flashlight, and the keys to the building before hesitantly stepping outside of the car. Marching my way up to the colossal doors, I kept my eyes low towards the concrete ground. The sounds of the crickets and owls in the distance was enough to keep me comfortable on what was otherwise a strangely quiet night. Now, although that would have put most people on edge, I found it rather relaxing, 
for once, these sounds of cars, buses, and trains were gone. Once I had found the right key to the lock, I lifted my head to begin unlocking it. However, when I looked up, I saw something that not only made me shiver in place, but caused me to jump back so suddenly that I dropped the key itself. What the hell? I blurted, stepping back a few feet to process the sight. On the doors where the large lock was, were scratches. Very long, large scratches that looked as if a steroid-induced brown bear had done it. Just a second ago, the door looked completely untouched and was as smooth as butter. A clean, white pristine finish over the iron material. The chains of the lock had also been cut by whatever had made the scratches, which seemed impossible for me to not be able to hear, considering I was right next to the dang thing. Well... I guess there's no need for the key then. I muttered nervously to myself, picking up the keys with slightly shaking hands. Putting a hand on each iron door, I heaved and pushed with all my might and opened the doors. Luckily, they had supports built into them. Otherwise, there was no way that I was getting in without explosives. The door gave off a very low, rumbling noise as I pushed them further and further open, almost as if they had voices of their own. After a few more seconds of finally pushing and putting my back into it, the doors were finally open and I could step inside. When I looked forward, the building had a pretty simple layout. There was a long and 10 foot wide hallway down the middle and multiple small garage door storage units on each side. At the very end sat a medium-sized wooden desk, with a black leather chair behind it, accompanied by a small glass window that looked onto the desk where supposedly I was going to be stationed for the night. Towards the top of the ceiling ran a long metal balcony that circled the entire rectangular perimeter of the interior. When I turned and repeated the process that I had gone through earlier to open the doors in order to close them, I could have sworn that I saw what looked to be like a small, brittle, and skinny-looking little boy staring at me just before the door shut. My heartbeat rose ever so slightly as the intense slamming sound of the doors closing erupted throughout the room, before it all returned back to the peaceful yet uncomfortable silence. I had just figured that my brain was going crazy due to the lack of stimulation that I was usually used to. I took just a few extra seconds to make sure that the doors were completely shut and secured tightly. Not that I was fearful of anyone being able to get in here anyway. When the doors were shut, the place seemed to be secured. I walked myself down the hallway over to the security desk. However, before sitting down, I looked over to my left. On the wall, there was a very old, busted up heavy looking wooden door that looked like it had been around for much longer than the building had. There were drawings in what appeared to be chalk. They were all just a bunch of creepy looking symbols, one of them being a pentagram. But that was about the only one that I had recognized. I figured some teenagers had come by long before I was here, and just vandalized it with their own twisted sense of humor. Not too much of a big deal. Only I was conflicted as to how they got past the doors in the first place. I remembered the purpose of the doors with the symbol on it though. The owner of the building told me that there was a basement to this place, for when these storage units either became too full or tools were kept for when maintenance was needed. Therefore, I stopped questioning it and finally sat down at the desk, rummaging through a couple of the drawers in order to find the things that I needed. A couple minutes of ravaging through the desk led me to getting a hold of the employee handbook for security. How hard could it be to watch over a place like this? What truly caught my attention was a piece of paper underneath the handbook that read, The Rules, and the same chalk that had been used to draw on the door to the basement. The handwriting of the note was sloppy, as if it had been written by a young child. The Rules Please follow these to a T. It can and will save your life. It read at the top. Rule number one. 
If you hear footsteps rapidly approaching up the basement stairs, stay in your chair and don't go near the door or make a sound. Sit quietly and wait for 30 seconds. Rule 2 If a tall, young, scraggly-haired girl with long, dirty fingernails appears to you, asking where her brother is, tell her, I haven't seen him lately, in those exact words. Rule 3 If you hear scratching coming from inside the garage closet to the big iron doors on the right, walk up to it and tap your nightstick lightly three times against the door. Do not talk or make any other sounds. It doesn't like that. Rule number four. When midnight arrives, there will come noises of a small female child crying from outside in the woods behind the building. Do not investigate the crying, no matter how human it may sound. Rule number five. If you look outside the window behind your desk and spot a man with a torn suit, very deformed skin with lifeless, pitch black eyes, and an unnaturally large grin on his face with razor sharp teeth gleaming in the night and standing at the entrance of the forest. Smile back and give him a small wave. After this, turn around and pay no attention to him, even if you may hear him tap on the glass. Reading all of these rules made me jump to the immediate conclusion that it was a prank. Something either the owner or previous security guard had written as a cruel joke to scare the new guy. There was no way any of this was real. Right? I immediately put the paper back into the drawer, disregarding it for now as nothing more than a joke, and pulling out the actual handbook to begin reading it. It was all pretty basic stuff. What to do if someone is trespassing making sure there are no ways for anyone to break in or cause trouble, and so on. This all seemed much easier than what I had originally thought. Although, sitting here for several hours was going to make me antsy. I had regretted not bringing any entertainment besides my flip phone. Yeah, I know, I have a flip phone, which wasn't even getting any signal anyway in this place. I grabbed a pencil that I had spotted on the upper right corner of the desk and began to tap it in a catchy rhythm. As a small way to amuse myself while I watched the security camera feed. I tapped for what seemed like less than a minute, but as I went on tapping, it for some reason became louder. Even though I wasn't applying any more force than what I had started with. The tapping amplified far beyond what I was doing before I came to the horrifying conclusion that the sound was of rapid, unnaturally fast footsteps trampling up the basement staircases. They were quick, aggressive, and almost hostile sounding. Whatever was running up the stairs was not only agile, but massive and most likely strong. Stronger than me for sure. Not that I was itching to find out. My heart stopped as I felt my blood freeze. I involuntarily curled my toes up in my shoes as I leaned over and quietly opened the drawer to get the paper with the rules on it. Rule number one. If you hear footsteps rapidly approaching up the basement stairs, stay in your chair and don't go near the door or make a sound. Sit quietly and wait for 30 seconds. There were a few more loud and repetitive steps before the sound suddenly ceased, until I could only hear a heavy breathing, not one of fatigue but more out of anger and lust for something, probably for me. I couldn't tell if it was feminine or male, just that it sounded hungry, like it hadn't eaten anything in weeks. I sat as still as I possibly could in the chair. My breathing was irregular and my hands began to shake in terror, but I did what the paper had told me and stayed silent. But I wanted nothing more than to open my mouth as wide as possible and just scream. I know doing that at this point was an instant way to earn myself a horrible death, that I had imagined in many ways for what a sort of horrible entity or creature could have been on the other side of the door. It wanted to hurt me, I just knew it. I know staying silent was a part of getting out of this situation alive, but I knew that thing was still aware of my presence nonetheless. 
The breathing became slightly louder, although it didn't bang on or touch the door in any way. Its presence was enough to make me shiver like a child. But after the 30 seconds had finally passed, the sound of whatever the thing was on the other side of the door running back down the stairs, just as fast as it had ran up them, gave me the opportunity to finally be able to take a deep breath comfortably. The fast footsteps slowly faded out as the creature moved south down the building back into the basement. I'm pretty sure the basement was some sort of portal to hell instead of a regular old basement. It took me a minute to regain the courage to move, but I did my best to normalize my breathing back to what it had been before that nightmare of an event had taken place. I wish that I could tell you that my previous experience had prepared me for something like this, but no, not even close. I kept rereading the piece of paper with the rules on it. I wanted to make sure that I got the rules cemented in my head. Although, I was going to keep the paper on me just in case. I wasn't going to go another second without having it in my possession. At this point, it would be foolish. None of this felt real. Why hadn't the owner told me about any of this? Why wasn't this place closed down? Abandoned? To hell with all of this. That is, if I wasn't in hell already. I knew that attempting to go home early seemed like even more of a death sentence now. I didn't want to risk setting foot outside of the structure, even with whatever the heck that thing was in the basement. As long as I kept the door sealed and shut, I figured everything would be okay. I was able to at least check the time on my phone despite the lack of signal. It was currently 11.30pm, getting close to midnight. In order to calm my nerves, I began to pace up and down between the storage units, carrying my nightstick in one hand and the rolls in the other. But that didn't stop the fact that I had the overwhelming feeling of being watched looming over me. It was almost as if the strange forces in this place didn't want me here, or anyone for that matter. As I was pacing, I came to the opposite end of the hallway to my desk. I took a look at the garage doors, making sure there were no flaws or breachable points. I can't wait until this is over, I muttered to myself. Naturally, when I had finished my little sweep, my first action was to begin walking back and turn around, which I did and immediately regretted it. Standing in front of the desk was a very tall woman, she had to be nearly 8 feet. Her black, long, scraggly hair hung down to her legs and covered up most of her face. Save for parts of her forehead. She was impossibly skinny, but that only made her more inhumanly horrific in her appearance. Her fingernails looked between 4 and 6 inches long. They were extremely dirty and beat up, covered in what seemed like dried up blood just from first glance. What made me really flinch was the fact that she was nude, but possessed no breasts or typical genitals of a human female. She stood perfectly still as she stared down at me, not even breathing as she kept her eyes fixed on me. Have you seen my brother? She asked. Her voice was extremely raspy, not in a masculine way but it sounded as if someone decided to violently slide a cheese grater up and down her throat. I froze, not knowing what to do. I began to internally panic and my instincts were getting the best of me. The rules had temporarily left my head, as I tried desperately to remember them. Answer me, she shrieked. The room shook under the force of her wavelengths as her demonic voice boomed throughout the structure of the building. Uh, no, no, I haven't, I promise. I quickly blurted out. Crap, I thought to myself. I had forgotten what I was actually supposed to say to her. I had broken one of the rules. The girl snapped her head to the right quickly, as if she had just broken her neck. Her hair didn't move out of her face, save for her eyes which I guess was a good thing at this point. 
I grabbed my nightstick while it was on my waistband, gripping it tightly in case she came at me. But she just stood there doing absolutely nothing while staring at me. I didn't even want to blink. I did everything I could to keep my eyes open and make sure that my attention hadn't been taken off of her, not even for a second. My eyes burnt and a stinging sensation crept up on me as I strained to keep them open. Eventually, I had no choice but to let myself blink, which then gave the woman enough to vanish. I turned frantically and looked all around to make sure that she wasn't in the building. I know for a fact that it probably wasn't going to be my last time ever seeing her. I immediately exhaled once I saw the space was empty and the coast appeared to be clear. But still, I kept my grip on my nightstick while using my other hand to pull out the piece of paper with the rules on it to see how gravely I had messed up. Rule number two. If a tall, young, scraggly-haired girl with long, dirty fingernails appears to you asking where her brother is, tell her, I haven't seen him lately, in those exact words. Seeing my mistake physically written down in front of me did nothing to help my nerves. I could feel my hands sweating a river as I tried to take bigger, slower breaths to calm myself down. Speaking of my hands, however... When I looked at the back of my left wrist, there had been a pentagram carved into it. Despite the fact that I felt no pain or blade slice my skin, it wasn't bleeding heavily, but it was still red like it was a fresh scratch that I'd gotten only minutes ago. I came to the conclusion that it was because I had foolishly broken one of the rules. I pulled on my phone again to check the time. 11.58 p.m. I walked back over to my desk, sitting down and letting my head rest on the wood as I waited for the inevitable. Soon, the crying of the girl in the forest started. It had hit midnight. It was agonizing, less crying and more screams of emotional and physical pain. Please, please help me. The voice begged through the trees. I didn't dare go near the window by the security desk. I didn't want to know what horrific sight was waiting for me there. I stayed in place. Not that I was planning on moving anyway. Obviously, my instinct was to open the doors, get into my car, and drive out of here. But whatever was outside it definitely wasn't going to let that happen. I needed to at least wait until the cries of the girl stopped. It wanted to lure me out there to either consume or kill me, or whatever it was demonic entities usually did. It's getting me, please. Please help. She continued on. Her screams became more and more blood-curdling and unsettling as time went on. Eventually, the forcefulness of her pitch began to fade. It sounded as if the vocal cords in the girl's throat were beginning to tear. I just took it as the entity giving up and seeing that I wasn't going to take the bait. It wasn't until nearly five minutes after it initially begun that the screaming had finally ceased. It was now completely quiet outside. Although at this point, the silence didn't bring me peace. I turned and took a gamble at looking out of the window behind the desk. To my relief, there was nothing out there. Just the dark silhouettes of trees, grass and bushes which somehow also made me even more uncomfortable. I leaned over in the chair, sitting forward, and keeping my eyes down the hallway of the building, with my back turned to the window. And then the lights had suddenly started to flicker in and out. One of them fully gave out and exploded after several seconds. I watched as little sparks and pieces of glass had fallen onto the floor of the hallway. It made me nervous that it was going to end up starting a fire in the building. The flickering became more and more intense before all the lights had finally given out, and now the room had gone completely pitch black. 
I could see nothing, but I felt the presence of something behind me, something evil. You didn't follow the rules, came the bone-chilling voice. It was almost as if I could feel the entity's breath pass through my body. No, uh, no, no, please, I shouted. I was at the breaking point. I could no longer take a single second to being in this hell. I needed to get out. I immediately leapt out of the chair. With adrenaline pumping through every single vein of my body, I bolted through the darkness to the end of the hallway and used a muscle memory to begin pulling the iron doors open as these sounds of strange laughter surrounded me. They were taunting me, making me feel as if all my efforts were in vain and that I was going to become a victim to them no matter what. I was able to pull the doors open in just a few seconds and the moonlight of the night quickly pierced itself into the building, lighting it up like Times Square. Once the doors were open, I bolted out of them and over to my car, grabbing the keys and jamming them into the lock before throwing the door open and dashing into the driver's seat. Whatever was pursuing me had seemed to either not care or wanted me to get away and the sound of laughter only became louder and louder as I turned the keys in the ignition. Once the engine was on, I threw it into reverse and immediately slammed my foot on the gas for dear life. Only taking a couple of seconds to look back as I peeled away. In the mirror, I saw the stomach churning reflection of the man with the huge smile the note had described. A torn suit, ragged and deformed skin. The huge smile with razor sharp, rotting teeth and lifeless black eyes staring right back at me. He waved ever so slowly at me through the mirror as I peeled away. His inhumanly large grin did not change in the slightest as I left him, and whatever the heck else was there in the dust. From the moment on, I was never working a night shift ever again, no matter how high the pay was. It's been a couple of weeks now of taking time to myself and talking to a therapist that I could barely afford. Not that I told her the full truth, of course. I had been scrolling through my phone, ignoring any communication from the owner of the building. In fact, I even blocked his number and anything to do with him. When I called the police and gave them as much info as I could about the place and the owner, they came up with nothing sufficient enough to press forward with an investigation. I knew that I had to take matters into my own hands and do my own research. I wanted the owner of the building to pay me for what he had put me through. Some might say that sounded a little psychotic, but you can't sit there and tell me that you wouldn't be upset if someone lured you into something like that. So I simply went about scrolling and surfing the web one day in my quest to find more info, and I had come across an online news article which had immediately caught my attention with just the headline. Security guard at Will's storage house missing after only two days on duty, police say. As bad as I felt for the guy, it was just the event needed to kickstart an investigation. A necessary evil, if you will. In two days, I thought. He lasted longer than I did. I'll give him props for that. But when I dug further into the article... The writer made a point of saying that he vanished with no trace. The only clue being was that his car was still parked outside of the building. No one would believe me, but I knew. All those creatures, entities, monsters, whatever they were, had gotten him. I broke the rules, but I got lucky and survived. I couldn't say the same thing for him. To everyone reading this, whatever you do... If something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Trust your gut, or you'll end up like the poorest soul in the news.